gonna start though. I'm rolling. You're gonna have to be loud. Are, are we gonna be able to see each other like that? You think? Like both of us in frame? Yeah. All right, we are here at the SEMA show 2015. 2015, yeah, that's right. Where did the time go? It's pretty exciting to be here. It's the biggest probably car show in the world, isn't it? It most certainly is for the aftermarket. Yeah. And we're gonna be here for three days. Yep, three and, long, hard days. And our goal is to what? Bring as much coverage to... That's right, we're gonna grind it out, try to bring you guys as much coverage as possible here with us editing into the wee hours That's of the night after covering this show all day. That's right, so hopefully nightly video, a nightly story. That's enough, I think, for two guys to I, do. I think so, yeah. 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 So no parties for Peter this year, unfortunately. The strippers will miss him, but <laughs> he'll be all right. I'm sure they'll be busy without him. Yeah. So obviously, since we're performance guys, we're going to look for the coolest you know, new go-fast parts. And cars, but we will also show you some of the uh, the bling that's here because we enjoy that as much as any other guy sure, does. Sure, and it's Vegas, right? So uh, there's an element of bling here for sure, including some scantily clad women that maybe uh, We'll probably not really focus nah, on that. Nah, really we'll stay away from those. There's, got a, wedding there's a million other it. websites out there yeah. that provide it's, that. It's true. And <laughs> yeah, we're not we're not the uh, car pervs. So uh, yeah, we're excited to be here. It's, it's gonna be a grind, but man, there's already so much cool stuff to see. There certainly is. We've got a lot of people to meet as well. We do. We're gonna do some business here too. That's right. So what do you say we put our heads down and get to it? All right. And our first stop of the day was at the old Lexus booth where we found this bright orange GSF with some awesome carbon work. And this is the RCF GT3, which is gonna race next year under the new F Performance Racing Team with Scott Pruitt driving. Speaking of Fs, here is another orange one, the RCF with this extreme Rocket Bunny kit and some Volk TE37s. TE all the things! And for all you BMW E46 and E90 fans, White Line has got some serious bushings for you. And this is our buddy John Seibel's 964 with the iconic RWB super duper wide body kit. I'd say so, rocking some sweet work wheels there too. Deep dish to the extreme. And the boys over at Stance Works have really outdone themselves this time with Rusty Slammington's Resurrection. Just look at this thing. It's like full wide body DTM style. It's some crazy arrow, I love it. And I also love that sort of rusty patina that it's kept. Not to mention the interior is all tubed out. I mean, it's basically a full tube frame chassis now, isn't it? Yeah, it looks crazy. The, uh, the transmission looks like it's sitting right next to you, the driver. And the same thing goes for the engine, which is stuffed pretty much in the passenger side. Talk about warming the old feet. And here's Gas Monkey's 4GT on, bam, airbags. I love it. And speaking of aired out, check out this Audi R8 with a Liberty Walk wide body and a sweet set of rotiform wheels. I like. What I don't like though is this Lamborghini with these horrid green wheels. It's not a drift car, bro. But we are big fans of Roadkill and General Mayhem. And it's got a new blown Hemi under the hood. Next up, there's the DC2 Rywire Integra with a trunk full of surge tanky goodness. Man, this build is just immaculate, isn't it? The level of attention to detail is just like hot rod challenging, isn't it? It is, and it's got a full MoTeC system installed. Yeah, and those paddles on the steering wheel aren't for show. That's air-actuated sequential goodness right there. My goodness, look at that. Even that little switch panel is MoTeC. Ryan wasn't cutting any corners on this build. Yeah, especially in the engine bay. Check this thing out. Mm-hmm. Gigantic Golden Eagle intake manifold to go along with, of course, all of Rywire's own super high-quality wiring. Top quality plumbing. That's right, this build is top notch everywhere. It's been tucked, shaved, and of course, it has a big turbo to boot. Yeah, this is gonna be one serious time attack car when he finally gets it on the road. Yeah, I think he was saying it's gonna make like 700 to the wheel or something. Yeah, although I said he might run it at more like 500, but that's still plenty to the front wheels. 
And how about those Evo style front flares? Man oh man, we love this build. And I'm not even sure what this truck is, but it's got a crazy compound turbo diesel setup and some massive tires and airbags. Over in the Saban booth, we spotted our buddy Travis Barnes' STI from Snail Performance. Of course, it's got all of Saiban's carbon goodies on it, along with a sweet set of Volk Racing ZE40s in that, I don't know, is that mag blue? What is that That's color mag called? blue. All I know is this thing looks awfully sweet and the ride height was actually realistic. And what about this Lambo? Meh. Full Race had a major presence in the Borg Warner booth on their EcoBoost motors. And this VQ was rocking the Altered Atmosphere Motorsports twin turbo kit that makes around 600-ish to the wheels. And I don't know much about VW engines, but this one from APR looked pure badass especially with that amazing carbon intake. And this is our buddy Will's Civic SI from PZ Tuning. This bad boy is going to Global Time Attack Super Lap Battle. And, and check out that sweet Speed Academy sticker. Plus five horsepower. And here we have Mishimoto's WRX STI product display, which includes intercooler, piping, oil cooler, intake. Man, they've got everything for this setup. And this is their Ford EcoBoost display, which includes this three inch exhaust system you see, along with intercooler piping, silicone hoses, a really nice baffled overflow tank for the cooling system, as well as that shiny intake system. And over in the Spider booth, there was this gorgeous 997 Porsche with a Liberty Walk wide body kit. Man, I could not take my eyes off this thing. This saline Mustang wasn't too hard on the eyes either. I really like the unique shade of uh, yellowy orange it has, and being that it's a sailing car, I bet it makes a whole bunch of power. We were really digging these FRS JDM headlights and taillights from Windjet. And this ninth gen Civic headlight was really sweet too, including an LED high beam. And here are the two finalists for the Pass Mag Tuner Battleground contest. Yeah, this 350Z caught our eye. It's pretty sweet looking with that wide body but the TSX behind it was rather sexy too. I think it's got my vote. And in the Rally Sport Direct booth was this fully pimped out Cosworth built STI. Was this the Rally Sport booth or the Cosworth booth? I couldn't tell because both cars were all Cosworth out. And they were both rocking the ZE40s, which are probably the most popular wheel at the show. Yes, indeed. And of course, under the hood, Nothing is complete without a Cosworth intake manifold. Look at that thing. It's got some volume to it, that's for sure. And I'm liking their supercharger kit over on their FRS. And of course, a Rocket Bunny kit, but this one a little bit more aggressive than most. Ford always has a massive presence at SEMA, and this year was no different. Yeah, it's got to be the biggest booth of the show, and it's just stuffed full of Mustangs, Fiestas, Focuses, F-150s, the whole shebang. Including this one with questionable lights? Yeah, but a pretty cool uh, over fender setup, so we'll give them some points on that one. And this is D-Sports Fiesta project car, which has been built for the track, and we absolutely love it. Yeah, what's not to like about Pirelli Slicks and TE37s? The rotors have been custom drilled, and so have the hubs to make them fit. And over in the Mustang convertible area, lots of shiny colors and giant front lips. And of course, the Focus RS. Man, we can't wait to get our hands on one of these and drive it. And this one was the Ken Block edition that they were actually raffling off. Yeah, someone's gonna be lucky. Speaking of lucky, how'd you like to drive the new Ford GT, man? Look at this thing. 
and it's gonna be competing at the 24 hour of Le Mans. As it should with Arrow like that. It is a wild, wild looking machine. This wide body Mustang was in the Vortec Superchargers booth and it had a ton of carbon in the engine bay. Of course, along with a giant blower, which has to make this five liter engine pump out a bunch of ponies. But check out the engine bay on this Chevy Bel Air, I think. I don't know what it is, but the paint on it was just mind blowing. That thing had more metal flake in it than a rapper's grill. Certainly did. And those wheels too, man, look at those things. This Ring Brothers creation is called the Splitter. It's a 1965 Fastback Mustang and just check out the engine bay. That's a forward racing 427 cubic inch monster. And these strut tower bars or whatever the heck those are, man, they are some pieces of art. Indeed. And speaking of art, check out the interior. It is as bespoke as they come with all kinds of high quality materials everywhere. We're talking some dollars spent here, buddy. Big time. Same thing in the old trunk, but the amplifiers, uh, I'm not so sure of. For all you potheads out there, Canheads got you covered with their cabin air filters. Mm-mm, good freshness. If you've ever made your fingertips bleed like we have when assembling braided lines, you'll love these new neoprene hoses with push fit fittings. Super easy to assemble. And for LS swap enthusiasts, these quick connect fuel fittings will make your life much easier. We were really digging these new gauges from Holly, which have a very clean design, and as you can see, are also daisy chainable. And check out the digital dash display from Holly, which has a new shift light option. Speaking of digital dashes, Race Pack has just released this new IQ3 Street version. That's right, it's got turn signals, parking brake function, all of that stuff built in to make your streetcar even more streetable with a digital dash. And check out this Optima Streetcar Challenge old school Datsun pickup truck. That's right, and it has a Miata drivetrain, believe it or not. The answer is always Miata, PT. When you're Corey Hosford and you want to build a badass drift car, you take an S14 and you get the Boss Rocket Bunny Aero Kit, and then you do something crazy like stuff a turbo V8 under the hood. Check this puppy out. Oh man, that is some serious looking bling. And this thing's rumored to be able to make almost 1500 horsepower. Of course, the inside is all business and ready to rip. Autometer was showing off their new air drive gauge system that uses a Wi-Fi dongle that plugs into your OBD2 port and wirelessly transmits the information to your gauges. You can then jump on your iPhone or your iPad and set up the color display, warning lights, high and low, color range, the whole shebang. We also admired all these stack gauges pretty much going crazy, but we love them because they're so damn cool looking and all about motorsports. Dynan had a couple of sweet BMWs on display, including this 235i with turbo upgrades and their ECU flash that was good for 450 horsepower. And this M4, I always find that confusing, had their carbon fiber intakes that match beautifully with that giant carbon fiber tie bar that BMW puts in standard. That's a whole lot of carbon. Folks. And that's a whole lot of cool color. <laughs> it is. And now let's admire some Project Mew brakes. They're round and they slow your car down. And they also look pretty sexy, especially these motorsport ones. Oh. And wait, Project Mew now offers an oil filter magnetic one. 
over in the Mac and Industries booth, the official Raise Wheels distributor for North America. They had all their latest stuff on display. And well, we had to wipe away a lot of drool. Let's just say we wanted four of everything. That's right, including these for my BMW, and these for my S14, and these for the S2000, and we can go on and on and on. And Ray's also makes Yokohama wheels. That's right, they do. And they're looking really good on the 370Z. Oh, those RZ2s are damn sexy too. They remind me of the gold RG2s I had on my G35. Yes, sir. And they come in all those sexy colors. Pre-runner style old school pickup truck? I'm in love, just look at this thing. It is ready to go off-roading and just like hit the Baja. Look at this thing, wow. And this BMW? <laughs> mm, yeah, not so much. I mean, I'm not liking the Rocket Bunny kit, but the supercharged LS under the hood? All right, I'll dig that. The green though, it's gotta go. Yeah. I will say, the rotiform wheels, mm, those I do fancy. Really? They look like wrenches in a circle to me. No way. I'm loving them. And this Cadillac was just out of this world. I don't know what to say about it other than copper-plated bullets in the engine bay and on the front grille. And all over the interior. I have no idea what it's about, but it was pretty damn cool. It certainly was. Oh, and check out the new Camaro. Yeah, they had a whole bunch of concepts on display, and all of them look pretty promising. We actually just tested this car out recently, and we were really impressed by how much lighter it is, how much stiffer the chassis feels. We think it's gonna be a really good performance car. Turbonetics' latest offering is their TNX series of turbochargers, which are, of course, dual ball bearing and compact in design, ready to make some big power out of a small, lightweight package. The AS2000's much better looking brother from another mother is Evasive's new S2000 with Voltex Aero everywhere. I love that front arrow especially, and I noticed it has a V-mount front setup, which means it must have boost. This thing is gonna be seriously, seriously quick. Edelbrock's a little bit late to the game, but they've designed a supercharger for the FRS. It makes around 250 horsepower to the wheels, and its intake manifold looks like it was designed by aliens. So that's it for day one. It's a wrap. My feet have taken as much punishment as they can. Yeah, I don't remember the show being as big, no, but holy huge. smokes, it's a gargantuan it monster. And we didn't cover nearly as much as we wanted to. No, we only got maybe halfway through the performance hall here. Yeah. Saw some good stuff though. We did, so we hope you enjoyed today's coverage. We will be back tomorrow that's right. with the same amount. Our feet are taking it for you guys. <coughs>